I mean, obviously you weren't to know you're going to meet him in this final two years later, but what are you thinking about Phil Taylor at that point? Well, he came on the scene because um, obviously Eric sponsored him and we went away to a few events, tournament wires, and we used to play checkouts. Mm. What was it from 80 up to 130? Mm. You used to cheat though a lot. No, no, I didn't. <laughs> he was the best. He, he is, honestly, God, now he's the best finisher I've ever played with. Simon Whitlock's one of the best finishers. He was the best one. That's Gary. That's Gary Cool, the best finisher was. It was him. Was I actually came coming? in. Yeah, I actually came into the venue and Phil was stuck on 125 and I started from 80 and I went up to the 130 while he was stuck. <laughs> I mean, that's the good dates, the, the good parts of good it. Fun. But uh, I, I noticed that the way he was playing, like he's going to be something special. <coughs> Tony, what are you thinking in the commentary position? Are you thinking here we are? We've got a new generation now. We've seen the Bristows and the Lows and Lazarenkos. Are you now witnessing a new generation of darts? Well, <laughs> it's it's like everything. I mean, from an overseas point of view, there's more overseas players coming to the fore now in Australia. Um, and the youth has been given a great chance, and we are seeing some great youngsters. I mean, um, Van Gerwen, most of these, uh, they've just come through at 17, and, and they're all out there, so the opportunity. So, yeah, I think there's, there's room there now for a clash of youngsters to take over the sport. It always happens anyway, in every sport, doesn't it? We get old. From the money point of view, Phil, mm. although later on, and we'll come on to that, there was going to be a split caused by things like money. Did, you're, you're working making ceramic um, toilet roll handles. See, that's said with the hell, that's a load of rubbish. That is a load of rubbish. <laughs> yeah. Well, I used to work on a factory that we were, we were a, a hand, what you call a hand turner. Yeah. And there was different, I mean, there was hundreds of things you made. And what happened was, the boss would give you a, a drawing, and you go away and make that thing. Whether it was a thing what went on a pylon or a part for a car or whatever. But as it happened, Sid Waddell come round the factory. <laughs> And he's got one thing in his mind, and the, 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 I used to train the apprentices, and the one lad who was there, who was still there, was making toilet handles. So he says, I made toilet handles all my life. I didn't, <laughs> trust me. But, you, but you're working... I was a bit it, flushed. <laughs> <laughs> but you were... Yay-ho, these are the jokes, folks. Um, we, are, we are in a situation now, though, that you're suddenly looking at some prize money. Yes. And a different type of money than you've seen before. £74 a week I was on. But the prize money wasn't bad at the embassy, was it? Uh, first one, 24 grand. 24,000. I remember uh, buying my dad a little car, a little four, uh, uh, Austrian Maestro it was. We put ribbons on it and everything. Yeah, it was cost about four grand or something like that. But uh, that was, you might as well give me a million pound. I mean, I'd never seen money like that before. What about you, Mike? Were you looking at the money at the time? Um, <coughs> no, because I obviously won a few things before that. Um, like I was getting quite big money from News of the World, which I won twice. That was five grand on each, and they had a holiday, and I couldn't take them, was working too much, and there was another couple of grand. But it was the same sort of story as Phil. I was only on 75 pound a week. And then to actually start doing exhibitions, and you're getting on in all this money, what do you do with it? And it really is difficult. You do learn, eventually, obviously, what to do with it. But it's a big thing to cope with. <laughs> the public perception of darts at that, this precise moment do you think? Oh, well it's like everything you know that everybody can throw a dart this is a good thing how good they are is another thing but I think from a television point of view it really did come into as a sport although it was never recognized but I, I think they just loved it they loved the characters and that was the main they were seeing working guys up there and, and that's what it came to be, and think, well, I could do that. And they get that set of darts out down the pub, we'll play each other. And this is how it all came about. You'll also, you'll also be associated heavily with Bullseye. Mm. Um, that TV series with Jim Bowen and yourself, how much impact did that make on the public with darts, do you think? Well... <laughs> I don't know if it was the dart side of it, oh Jim, <laughs> <laughs> because, no, I mean, Sunday, still re it. Sunday would never be the same without a bit of boy, you know, half past four, it was a family entertainment. Brilliant it was. It was. You and, look and forward and to it every week. And of course, 
guests came on, you know, the t uh, top professionals, it gave yeah, them the opportunity. True. Millions, 17 and a half million was a top viewing figure. The pressure I mean, on them, um, actually thrown for charity, was tremendous. Oh dear, don't. Because <laughs> uh, you want to get as so much as you can for the charity, and look, you get out there. It and is, hands it's really true. quivering. Never did that, you know. Never mm -hmm. did it was. I got 300 words, so I missed it by one point. Okay. You, you actually, um, with Eric Bristow, hold the record for nine darts, 380 you both shared, and that was for charity. Yeah. Do you remember doing that? That's right, yeah. I remember doing that one. I also, actually, I think I was the only one to win him twice, yeah. the bronze bully. And that was a nice feeling to get him back again. Like, but uh, oh, there was a lot of pressure. And, and I can't think of another sport that had a TV quiz show at the time, or, or since really, that based on the actual sport, can you? No, not really. The, the main thing was, I mean, from a, from a player's point of view, say there was 26 shows, so we had 26, everybody, have you got bullseye? No, no, oh, you might get it, there's another, maybe another place. And so much disappointment. But as I said, there's more pressure, wasn't there, for 301? Do you know what makes you make me laugh on bullseye, Tony? You get some top county player, and I'll, I'll tell you one name was Ronnie Peel. Oh, Ronnie. I played yeah, for England, yeah. I played for County, did this, did this, mm. and I've done that, and I've won this, I've won that, and he had about 30 quid, 30. didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> and he got, you got ripped to pieces. Everybody mm. watched Bullseye, oh, didn't yeah. they? People, yeah. you, the more, you could win the world title six times, but the little old ladies on the street only watch the Bullseye. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I saw you on Bullseye <laughs> last week. It's, gr it's brilliant, yeah. Great show. So, is this beginning to change your life a bit, the combination of Bullseye and being on television and money wise money wise yeah as mike yeah. said i mean i was on 300 pound a night then exhibitions so i've gone from 74 pound a week and that particular year i think i'd won about 40 odd tournaments so i did about 60 70 grand in in, in extra tournaments besides the world championship and then uh, and i was doing five or six nights a week exhibitions so the money was flying and is it changing your lives being recognized yeah, it wasn't it wasn't too bad really them days. I mean, it, you know, it wasn't too bad. You know, you weren't like Paul Gascoigne walking down the street or David Beckham, but it was it was nice for me. That's why I've done so well because I didn't get the instant fame. Do you know what I mean? I see a lot of sports stars now where they, they they're not known, and all of a sudden they're household name, and that's not a good thing, I don't think, because you haven't got time to get used to it. Because I've had a career of t oh, just over nearly 25 years, yeah. so I've, I've gradually. And it's better for me that way. And I've been able to handle the money a bit better, you know, and invest in this, that and the other. How, how did you handle it all at the time, Mike? Uh, it was a bit difficult to start off with. Um, but it's like Phil said, you know, you, you learn to do it. And, like, people do come up to you in the street. Or it, but then again, like you said, it's, it's nice to be able to go shopping. Or you can do this and do that without getting mobbed if you're a right big have money for go shopping. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> That's another yeah, one. feed the kids. <laughs> yeah. So we're going into the 1992 final now, and what sort of shape are you in darts-wise, Mike? Very good. I mean, I was playing quite well, practicing up to it. I used to do about eight hours a day, two hours on, have a bit off, two hours. And I actually had this uh, stage and put in my me, me living room to sort of to make sure I was on a stage doing it, not on the floor like in a, a tournament, say, abroad. So do you think mm, maybe this is my year? I always thought it was my year. I always think that I'm, gonna, I'm the best player. I just got to go out there and do it. And I come close to it, but uh, I enjoyed it. And how did you prepare? He for was it? one of them players when he was on song. You thought, oh no, do you know what I mean? Yeah. When you Mike Greg, well, how was Mike playing? He's playing well. You're thinking, oh no, I've got a tough one here. How did what, mate? How did you prepare? Same, same. Me and Eddie used to practice together. Funny enough, before the World Championships. But probably spend about two or three weeks. We used to meet her. We go, we go a, a pub somewhere. Not on a meet. stage or anything. No, 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 no. We used to go different places. Eric used to sort them out. So we'd meet there, and the, the, the back room would be shut off. Nobody could come in. We'd get somebody mark the board, and we'd we'd just bash at each other. He was he was a great player. You know, he wasn't so good as what he was, but he was still a good player then. He was suffering a bit, wasn't he? Under dark. Yeah, artists. yeah, yeah. I think he's I think he's winding his career down really. I think yeah. he'd, he'd done so many years. I mean, he'd, he'd done about twenty five years then. You know, we can. I don't, I don't know how he did it. So you're practicing, ready to go. What was the lakeside like as a venue? Brilliant, brilliant. I mean, it was the best, best venue we'd ever play, and that was your dream just to get there. It was hard enough. You know, you got millions of players who want to be there. So just to get in the top 32, 
was, was an achievement in itself. Um,